Go, good go, boy, go, good go, boy. Go, oh man, go. really threw you for a loop that time, big boy. Go, good go. job, oh, good. There's a lot of different ways you can train a tracking dog and, we, and I, I use them all. I like to start with this real hide. So this is a hide off real deer. Um, they bring them in here, flush them, all that sort of stuff. What's nice is, for, especially for these retrievers, is I can put this on a bumper. So we can get a little bit of a retrieve and we can attach it to the idea of the retrieve, which we know is their reward, to this smell, the scent, um, this particular texture. It's unique from any birds. It's unique from a regular uh, bumper. It's unique from a tennis ball. So we're gonna use that. We're gonna use our blood trail scent as well. So I'll take this out. Oh boy. This is our, our tracking lead. It's biothane material and it's nice because we, you can clean it really easily and it doesn't um, get wrapped up and snagged in the, in the brush. Now part of this tool is if it does start getting wrapped up in the brush, I always remember that because that's telling me that the dog is doing circles and if they're out there doing circles, they may be having a hard time finding and staying on scent. So that's just, that's an indication for me, just like their body language that maybe we should stop, slow down, take a break or restart. And restarting is as simple as going, you know what? We're having a, a little bit of a tough time right here. We maybe lost the scent, not a big deal. We're gonna stop them, come back to the last spot. We knew where he was on confirmation, whether that's by body language or you actually see blood for kicked up uh, dirt and leaves. We'll sit them and restart them from that spot. So that's the leash. I use a harness for my dogs. And the reason we use a harness is if we just have a flat collar on and they really start pulling, they're gonna kind of cut their airway off a little bit and they're gonna start to struggle to breathe. Well, what's the number one thing we need a tracking dog to do? Is breathe and smell, right? So with this, that's gonna allow them to pull with more of their shoulders and less their, th their throat. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna let him get a little sniff of this. I want him to see it, smell it. Ooh, yeah, so we're adding value to this right now. He's going, well, this is kind of neat. Get a little fur in my mouth. The smell is really good. Man, this thing is valuable. It's kind of fun. Good, so we're gonna get him back, and I'm gonna plop this right in front of him. Go ahead and let him watch, and I'm just gonna back up. And when I'm backing up, you're gonna hold him back. And when I give you uh, the signal, a signal, gonna give him his hunt command and let him work him work his way up this trail okay go ahead Good, now pick that leash up. You see pretty quick, huh? Good boy, good boy. Good boy. Now come to him. Good boy. Good boy, come on. Come yep, good, on, get him back and have a party. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Good boy, good job. Yeah, good boy. There's a good boy, yeah, come on, come on. Good boy, yeah. Come good on. job, good job, Ralph. Good job. Yeah, yeah it's good, good boy. boy. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Good boy, yeah. Good, so that was good. Now on this next one, um, when you go back, you don't have to send them like you're sending them for a retrieve. To me, it's more of a hunt command thing. Like I want you, this is your signal, because you're not going to see the deer laying there. Right. So this is your signal to hunt and find. Okay. And when he gets on that trail, good boy, find it, find it, find it. And you don't have to say that throughout the whole course of the track, but make sure he's on it and you'll see his body language change. Now I'm going to drag this back when you're going. So he's not going to see me extend this trail. So we're going to force him to use his nose a little bit more this time. And we're going to test him a little bit. Okay, Ralph, find it find it and get him to come up. And once he hits that, that scent line, good boy, find it, find it, good boy, and then let him hunt it out. Okay. 
Good boy, good. That was really good. Really good. Oh, really good. Good job, buddy. Good. I bet Logan got some really great film. So when he got up to that spot, um, he went, boy, he was supposed to be right here. It was here last time. And then you could see his face totally change and watch his nose. He's, yeah, totally. His nose went down and, and he went and looked. He looked kind of by those rocks and he said, no, it's not there. But you could see his nose and his face, he started going, yeah. <laughs> sucking that scent in. Really good job, buddy. So now we're gonna do the same thing again. We're just gonna build on this really slow. Cool. Um, so now when you take him, take him back, and I'm gonna plop this down right where it was. And as you're going back, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this trail longer. Whoa, big boy. Um, <laughs> right. Yep. So hey, what? Yeah, we got him engaged. What's the value of the training bag? I should have put this thing away so he doesn't have the opportunity to do that, right? Um, it's the same doing retriever drills, all that stuff. So on his way back, I'm gonna make this, and I may go into the cover a little bit with it. So we're gonna force him to use his nose again. Okay, now take him back, just back to where we found it last time. Get him to sit. Good, see he touched scent right there. Now don't, don't line him, because when we, when we line him like this, we're telling him that there's something out there to be found, when really his find is over here. So that's the power of the hunt command. Ralph, find it, find it. Good, good, good. Look at him go, look at his nose go. Find it, find it. He's just right there, he's right on it. Good, yep, find it. Find it, find it. And let him come back, because he's going, you know what, there's no scent here, so we're gonna make him Figure this puzzle out all on his own. Find it. Find it. Find it. Find it. He's searching for it. There's, he goes, man, I know that scent is right here. So I'm going to keep looking. I'm going to let him figure this puzzle. Now you can bring him back. You can get him get him to start hunting back this way. Good boy, good boy. Oh man, really threw you for a loop that time, big boy. Good job. Good. Good. Yes. So we threw something brand new at him. But look back. Every, you know, his nose hit the ground. Um, and pay attention to the wind. Where's the wind right now? Straight this. Yep. Straight this way. So when we're setting up our practice trails, let's think about that. And like we were talking. Um, 
yesterday at the demo, think about that fire and think about the embers coming off the fire. So that's all, and those, those should represent to you in that, that moment, skin rafts, um, pieces of fur, particles of gut matter, all those sorts of things. And you watch those embers, how they move around. Yeah. Well, it's all, look at him. <laughs> yep. I Go ahead. <laughs> have, a, have a party, big guy. That's all right. Hey, he did a lot of good work. When you get to the point where you're setting up tracks that are 16 hours, 18, 20 hours old, I don't want to leave a uh, find out there that long. We have coons are going to mess with it, coyotes are going to take it. So it's real easy for me to drive to the end, put the find out, drive back to the start, start and, and work that. Um, I'll set them up for all kinds of different things. Um, crossing rivers is a big one. I like to practice for that by crossing rivers. You have to expose them to all the things that they're going to see on a live track. Um, Four-wheeler trails are a big one. I like to do my trails over four-wheeler tracks and leave them all day because I know that there might be a half a dozen four-wheelers or side-by-sides going two ways on this track. Now that's going to help us because when we get to that track and we have scent all over the place, I can read his body language and go, you know what? He's having a hard time. This is what it looks like when Ralph is having a hard time on a track. So I'm going to help him out. And how are we going to help him out? We're either going to take him across that four-wheeler trail and let him hunt the, the edges. I want him to tell me where that deer crossed. That's his job. So I'm going to take him across. I'll do the same thing at Rivers. Or we'll restart him, just like we did back here. So that scent was, was weird. It kind of, you know, he got used to, I'll just go straight. I'll just go straight. I'm smelling it. We went straight twice in a row. We threw that curveball in at him. And we stopped them, we brought them back, restarted them. Okay, buddy, you gotta slow down. We're getting, we just made that puzzle a little bit harder. And, and he hunted it. So when we got to this tall grass, he went, I already found it in the short grass twice in a row. Why would I look in here? But he did it, he figured it out, you know? So really good job. Um, so that, that was a, a real simple intro to how we do these. So we start with these drags. Then what I do, I'll transition from the drags to use an actual deer blood um, that I've saved out of um, you know deer that we've killed or roadkill deer. Um, that blood will coagulate, so you have to um, put it in a blender or something like that to break those blood clots up. And then I, I put it in a like a ketchup bottle, like a fair ketchup bottle, cut the tip off. So as I'm walking, I can drop blood, yeah. splash blood, splash blood. Um, and the first time we do it, I'll do a drag and I'll splash a little blood as I'm doing the drag. Then I pick up the drag and it's just blood. So what are we doing? We're just bridging those two things. So then I'll put the, the drag back down with blood, pick the drag back up and then slowly incrementally we'll transition from we're not doing the drag to just blood. And then we have uh, hooves, we'll use hooves too, and I'll do the same thing. I'll put some of that blood on a hoof, and I'll put, use just the hoof, put some blood down, then just the hoof, and then I'll get to the point where we're not using any blood, and we're forcing him to learn to track just that hoof. Then that hoof, there's a, there's a gland in there, yep, it's an interdigital gland, and that's unique to every deer. So we're gonna force him that sometimes, you'll get on a track, and it'll be like a drag because the deer's gonna be, maybe he's gonna hurt something, he's gonna drag a leg for a while. Then he's gonna get up and move good. So then we're just gonna have interdigital scent gland. Well, then he's gonna brush up against, um, rub up against some brush and things like that. Or he's gonna leave a nice big smear of blood. So there's all these different things, all these different little parts of the puzzle that he's gonna have to learn to put together, find and make his recovery. Think about the times when you're gonna be tracking deer. So somebody's gonna shoot a deer at last light, they're gonna wait 40 minutes, go, oh boy, I think I punched a sucker in the guts, and they're gonna call you. And for like up where we live, it's hard to leave a deer overnight, um, the coyotes. But it's, it's really tough because if you push it, you know, there, I don't, sometimes there's, there's no great answer. I, at the end of the day, um, sometimes you just gotta leave them. And you don't wanna do that, but we found a lot of them 
at 16 and 18 hour mark that haven't been preyed upon. Um, so if you, if you push them, they're gone. Everything, everything gets exponentially tougher. The holes fill up with fat and guts. Um, there's, there's less scent the, you know, and they're uh, it, right, right. Um, no, when you do have a find again, make it a big celebration. These dogs should see dead deer before their first time seeing a real live dead deer is at two o'clock in the morning on somebody else's ground, you know, um, fee even when, when she comes up on a deer, I swear when she's tracking and she's in the zone, she closes her eyes and she follows her nose. I've seen her do it. It's, it is the most beautiful, incredible thing I've ever yeah, seen, cool. you know? Um, and she's, she, that's, I, man, I believe that's what she was designed to do. Like she, she just loves it. She's great at it. Um, but she closes her eyes. So when she opens them and there's a deer there, I've seen her go, Ooh, where'd you come from? Kind of a thing. Um, so they should be able to see that a lot of times, um, when the hunters are gutting their deer, the dogs will get a little chunk of the heart, uh, a little piece of the lung or liver or something like that. Um, so that's part of what adds value to the idea that I have to track this wounded deer because if I get on this live deer, I never get a reward. I never get a find, I never get a treat, I never get any of that other stuff. That comes from the wounded deer. So that's what gives him value.